You may take your seats, Judge. I greet one and all in Jesus' sweet name. It's great that we could be found in church again today. August is Women's Month. And if ever there is a word that most women ponder over, it is the word expecting. Newlyweds are big on expecting. The woman will be expecting lots of attention. She'll be expecting love. She'll be expecting comfort. She'll be expecting security. She'll be expecting things that money can buy. And in time, hope that she will be expecting a baby. It seems that this is the ultimate to make one feel complete. Sad, not many or not all could have the joy of having a baby. Some may have a baby in late life. Some may never ever have one. It is hard to imagine the loneliness, the helplessness, the low self-esteem as one battles with the feeling that one is not good enough to have a baby. It is common knowledge that there are many babies that some others don't want. We have babies thrown in pet latrines. We have babies left in parks and public places, abandoned by mothers. And while this is so, we have many people, women, that are desperate to become mothers and will do virtually anything to attain a baby. A few days ago, in fact it was earlier this week, I had an excited voice on the other side of the, of the phone. Uh, it was a lady from one of our branch churches and she gave me the news. She says, guess what? She says, I want you to consecrate a baby. I said, what? She said, yes. She says, I have a surrogate mother who's going to have a baby for me. And she nearly eight months. And I want you to come and consecrate the baby. Of course, I said it would be a joy to do that. Mothers or, or women are desperate and they want to have babies and they have a right to have that fulfillment. And like I said, it is sad, not all could have babies. In the Bible, we're going to look at a few stories where we have the cases of barren women and how God fulfilled their wishes. We have Luke chapter 1, verse 18 to 25. And the Bible says there was this priest, Zechariah, of the division of Abijah. His wife Elizabeth was barren, and both of them were old in age. One day when Zechariah was in the temple burning incense, an angel of the Lord came to him and gave him the news that his wife will be expecting. And we know that the angel went further on to say that you should call his name John, for he will be the anointed of God. Now this is the John that we are familiar with, John the Baptist. And we know what a great job he did as he baptized people, even Jesus himself. 
Jesus said this. He says, of all of the men that are born to a woman, none was greater than John the Baptist. So we have Zechariah who was not expecting the news of his wife expecting. He was shocked and he said, how can this be? For I am old and my wife is advanced in age. How can this be? I don't believe so. I don't think it's going to happen. The angel turned around and said, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God and make this declaration. You shall be silent, unable to speak till the bed. Because you don't believe, you're going to be dumb. You're going to be mute. You won't be able to speak till the baby is born. And as time went on, we nine months later, we have the baby born. And the date was set for the circumcision, which is eight days after birth. And the neighbors came around and the relatives came around and they were set in their mind as to what the little baby should be called. Because it was a baby in the old age for both of them, the relatives together with the neighbors said, he should be called Zechariah. And they insisted that he should be called Zechariah. But Elizabeth said, no. I want him to be called John. They said, no ways. He's going to be Zechariah. And they turned around and they asked Elizabeth, tell us, who in your family is called John? There's no John in your family. He must be Zechariah. So they looked for the father, Zechariah, and they called Mr. Zechariah. They said, Mr. Zechariah, tell us. What, you, what do you want the baby called? You've got to understand that Zechariah couldn't speak at all. He was big on sign language. And so he asked for a pen and a page. And then he said, the name shall be John. And the moment he wrote the name John, his tongue was loosed and he was able to speak again. And then we have that little baby John who became John the Baptist, who became a great man in that land. And we know finally that he ended off tragically. He had a tragic death indeed. So we have Zechariah, who was full of unbelief, who didn't believe till it happened. We also have a woman of similar fashion. When she heard that she was going to be expecting, the Bible says she laughed. It was a time when Abraham was 100 years old and his wife Sarah was 90 years old. They get a message that the wife is going to expect a baby. The scripture says Sarah laughed. She couldn't believe it. She says, no ways. I don't believe this. It's never going to happen. The scripture says that the Lord heard this. And the Lord asked the question. Why do you laugh? Why do you laugh? Is anything too big or too hard for God? We find it in Genesis 18.14. Is anything too hard for God? With us, many things are impossible. Many things just can't happen because of our limitations. But with God, all things are possible. He is not limited by any limitation. He is able to go beyond. He is the God that rolled back the sea. He is the God that stopped the sun. He is the God that poured down brimstone and fire. He is the God that heals the sick and the lame and the deaf and the dumb. With God, 
all things are possible. Is anything too hard with God? Definitely not. Definitely not. So if you have a little setback, you have a little challenge, you have a little storm, you have a little problem, understand that there is a God with whom nothing is too hard. The Bible mentions many barren women. We become aware of Rebecca. We become aware of Rachel. And then we find in Judges chapter 13, this story. There was a certain man of Zohar, of the family of the day nights. His name was Menuah, and his wife was barren. One day she gets a visit from the angel. And the angel tells her that she is going to be expecting that she will get a baby and that he is to be a Nazarite, which simply meant that she needed to be strict on certain diets, not drink grape juice or eat the fruit grapes of uh, eat grapes and observe other dietary rules and that when the baby is born the, his head shouldn't be shaven, his head shouldn't be cut, that he was going to be a Nazarite. And how good to know today that that baby was born to that woman. She had many restless moments as she struggled with herself. She saw other women have babies, she saw little children run around. There was this emptiness inside of her, there was this longing, there was this passion. If only it can be for me like that. And then the angel visited, and then the baby was born. What a profound man he became. Samson. We all know him as Samson. What a great man. He became the leader of the people. He became one of the judges, became one of the judges and ruled faithfully over the years. The first instant we had Elizabeth and we had John the Baptist. In this case, we have this woman give birth to Samson, a great man of God indeed. I don't know why God somehow prolongs the birth of people or a birth in the lives of women that long for children. I don't know why. But delays never mean denials. And we are aware that when the babies did come, they became profound people indeed. We look at another barren woman in the Bible, recorded for us in the first chapter, in the first book of Samuels. There was this man, his name was Elkanah. He had two wives, big mistake. The one's name was Hannah, and the other was Penana. Now Penana had many children, and Anna sadly had none. Penana went out of her way to taunt Anna and make her feel low in spirit, make her feel helpless, make her feel unfulfilled. And the taunting continued for a long time indeed. Anna became restless. Anna became worried. Anna became troubled. Anna became grieved. Because of the taunting, 
and because she couldn't have a baby that she wanted desperately. And imagine every day when she gets up, put an owl and the little children on the mound, will call daddy and say, daddy, hold the baby and laugh at Hannah. And then I, in those moments, felt very low in her spirit, and she really grieved. Yearly, we have Elkanah go to the temple. He would make his annual sacrifices, meaning that he will have a bullock slaughtered or a sheep, and he will bring part of that meat home. He will cut, up it, cut it up into portions. He will give Penana a portion. He will give all the children their portion. But when it came to Anna, he would give her a double portion, showing her how much he loved her. And he made it known to her time and time and again. He told her, don't worry about the taunting. Don't worry about that woman. Don't worry about the things she does. Don't worry how, she, how miserable she makes you feel. Know that I love you too, bitch. You are the apple of my eye. There's no one like you and I love you. Remember that. Believe that. Know that. I love you too, bitch. But despite all of this, and I still felt sad in my heart because she couldn't have a baby. And she knew that if only she can have a baby, then she'll feel good. She'll feel whole. She'll feel like the other woman. And she longed for that. On one of the occasions when they went to the temple, Anna decided while the ceremony was still in process, she decided to go into the temple. And then she went in the temple and found a secluded spot. And she started pouring her heart out to God. She says, God, no one knows me like you do. You don't know, you the only one knows the moment of my loneliness, the moments of my sorrow and pain and the anguish and how empty I feel. Nobody knows it like you, only God. And she started pouring out her heart to God. She said, God, I can't go on like this, God. I don't want to go on like this. I don't want to be like this all the days of my life. I want to change, God. And suddenly something started happening. Her voice became horrible no more. And she started praying in her spirit. There was this grief-stricken, heart-broken woman praying in her spirit. Eli the priest, suddenly when he sees that silence, he comes and he sees the woman. He sees the woman walking around. He sees the woman muttering some things. He can't hear the word. There is no word coming. But the lips is moving. The lips is moving. Tears are coming down the eyes. Goes and touches the woman. Says, woman, you better go and sober up. It seems that you intoxicated, you had too much of wine. Go, go and go, go, go sober up a little bit. The woman turns around and looks at the priest and says, I've never touched no liquor, no wine. I've touched nothing. My heart is crying because there is emptiness. My heart is crying because I want something desperately. I'm crying and I want my God to give me. I want my God. I want my God. I want my God to give me a baby. I want a boy. And priest gets worst. When I get the boy, I'm going to give it to my God. I'm going to take that boy that God gives and I'm going to give it back to God. As my sacrifice, as my love, 
as I show off my affection for them, I want to give it back to God. The priest did his best to console the woman and sent her on her way. And she goes home. That night, it started. She was consummated. And nine months later, a little baby boy was born. Can you imagine the joy in her heart? Can you imagine the change in her attitude, in her spirit? Can you imagine the change in the atmosphere when this happened? Yes, yeah, she had the little joy that she longed for all of her life. But she was mindful of one thing. She was mindful of the vow she had made. She didn't say, well, God, you gave me this baby. Well, it's mine now. And I will teach him your ways and train him your ways. No, she went beyond that. She remembered a vow in the temple when she said, God, if you give me that little boy, I will come and give him back to you. She waited a while till the baby was weaned. Then she takes that little baby. She goes to Eli, that prophet, and she says, prophet, priest, you know, I was the woman that came and cried here about a year ago. I'm back again for full. I'm back again happy. I'm back again with the joy of a little baby in my arms. You remember that time I cried? Well, now I come with a smile and I come with a baby. Because I want to keep to my vow that I made to my God. And she takes that little baby and she hands it over to Eli. And she says, you keep him, Eli, and you raise him up. And I'll come every now and then. And I'll come and watch him. And she walked away from there. In a way sad that she's forced to leave the love of her life behind and then also glad that she kept to her word that she kept to her vow that she fulfilled a dream she moved on but when she moved on back to her house God had already determined what to do there he opened up a womb and she had many sons and many daughters that were born to her. We turn our attention to the little baby that was left there in the temple. His name was Samuel. Samuel grew up in the ways of God. He grew up strong. He grew up confident. He grew up with an authoritative spirit. And eventually he became a prophet. And he became a judge. And he became the ruler of the Israelites for a long season. Till King Saul was established as the king. So Samuel served all of those years. A wonderful boy given by a wonderful woman. A woman who was willing to give a little baby away to God. Today we gather here. I believe that this message, that in this message God is showing us something. God is showing us that nothing is impossible. He's telling us that it's never too old. It's never too late. In this message, he's telling us that anything, there's nothing too hard for God. 
I want you to know there's nothing to add for God. We can ask anything in his name. I want to, during the course of this prayer session, pray for mothers especially. Pray, pray, pray that many women would become mothers especially. Pray for those that are here. Pray for those that are within our church. Pray for those that will come within the sound of this message as it goes on YouTube. Pray that God will allow, allow his anointed spirit to flow. That women would understand they have a right to have this joy. And that God is willing to give it to them if they would but ask. And we pray that there will be this new spirit that will flow. A fulfilling spirit. We want to pray for a new spirit to be birthed. We're tired of the old ways and are you tired of the old ways? Then you can pray for a new spirit to be prayed, to be built. We want all of us to be in an expecting mode. You see, if you're not in an expecting mode, then you're going to expect nothing really, even if it came your way. It's not going to surprise you, it's not going to shock you. It's not going to make you feel good because you never was thinking of it, you never was expecting. But if you can turn your life into an expecting mode, then I believe God will send something profound your way. Although as you look at that which you don't have, there seems to be no sign that it will happen. Everything seems empty, everything seems dead, it seems like barren land, it seems like there will be no shift in the environment. But I want to tell you what ability God has given you. I want to tell you what authority you have. I want to tell you how special you are. God is saying that you can use the power of your tongue and you can call into being that which is not. You hear me today? You better hear it loud and clear. You can call it into being. Call that which is not. And right now, many of us need to call many things into focus, into being. We need to call it. Some of us need a sound mind. You're constantly troubled, constantly unsettled, constantly having a double mind. You can have a sound mind and you do it by saying this, Lord, I want a sound mind today. I want a mind that can think. I want a mind that can focus. I want a mind that can put together things and make it profitable for me. And as you pray in those lines and call it into being, God is going to make it happen. We spoke about birth today. And I believe that God has got something inside of you that needs to be released, that needs to give birth. You can give birth to a new life. You can give birth to a new spirit. You can give birth to a new move. You can give birth to a new hope. It is inside of you that's waiting to be shifted and moved. You know what happened? When Elizabeth was about six months pregnant for John the Baptist, Mary, that was when Mary was pregnant for Jesus, comes to Elizabeth. Elizabeth said that something happened inside. The baby inside the womb leaped. There was an unsettling, there was a movement. There was an exciting sensation. And God is wanting to make something happen inside of you right now. He's wanting to make something leap. He's wanting to make something move. He's wanting to make something stir up. He's wanting to shift some things. And you can have nothing today. 
or you can have everything today if you're willing to get it burst in your spirit. The Bible says Almighty God is inside of all of us and has given us treasures for our benefit and for our betterment and these treasures are there to make our life a more rewarding one. And today you can give birth to a new idea. Some of us need to give birth to a new idea. A new idea that is going to shape our entire future. A new idea that is going to move us into levels we never thought was possible. A new idea that's going to elevate us and take us from the door drums, take us from where we are and place us on higher ground. There may be that high gear that's there, that has been sitting there all the time. And it now needs to be unearthed, it now needs to be moved, it now needs to be shifted, it now needs to be stirred, it now needs to come out in the open. And we sing today, that which is on the inside, you need to come out on the outside. It's good to have a woman pregnant expecting a child and if she's pregnant and expecting and expecting and expecting and the nine month period goes and the ten month period goes it's good for nobody because it's inside it needs to come outside it needs an expression it needs a different environment so if you have something inside of you that you feel is valuable give back let it get out. Let it be a shifting. Let it come out in the open. Let it connect with the things that it needs to. So that something profound can happen. And we only, every one of us only, we that are here can make it happen. So many simple, brilliant ideas powerful thoughts, wonderful ways. You know you've been thinking about it, you've been planning it. It's there, locked inside. Locked inside. Release it. Give back to it. Let it come out and find expression. And when you're able to do that, then you'll be able to find your glory You'll be able to find your fulfillment. You'll be able to find the joy that you longed for all of the time. Looking to Sarah, God asked the question, is anything too hard for God? I mean, we're not talking about man. We're not talking about a priest. We're not talking about a prophet. We're not talking about a soothsayer. We're not talking about a high official. We're talking about God Almighty. Is anything too hard for God? As Zechariah battled with unbelief when he got the news, never be! The angel said, you don't know what you're talking about. This was nothing to do with man. This is divine favor. This is divine intervention. Intervention. This is divine touch. You don't know what you're talking about. And the angel said, because you don't believe, you're going to be mute. You're going to be dumb. You're not going to speak till you see it happen. And it happened exactly the same. God is wanting to bless you people all of the time. I love that verse, Jeremiah 33, 3, where God says, call, I'll answer and show you. Who is wanting to show? Is he on show? No. But he says, I want to show you great 
and mighty things, great things, mighty things you know not of. And today we can become recipients of those great things, the mighty things. I want us all to stand today. Father, I believe you can do it again and again and again and again because you are God. There is nothing too hard for you. We think of those that are near, we think of those that are far. We think of those that are all around the God who are needing something to be bet inside of them. We think of those that are requiring babies, oh God. We pray for these would-be mothers. Right now, Lord, we pray that your spirit will just move over the entire territory. We pray that you remove every obstacle. We pray that you remove everything that gets in the way so that it can get out of the way. So that your spirit can infiltrate. Your spirit can do the work, start the work, create the work and bring into fruition of God. Pray for these persons of God that long for babies. Many in our church. We pray, Lord, that your spirit will prevail. We pray, Lord, that the word will go forth, that the word will bring and make it happen, that the word will, oh God, remind us that you are still in the giving business. You're still in the creating business. You're still in the transforming business. You're still in the powerful business of bringing about change. Pray for these mothers of God, would be mothers of God. Pray that we would, Lord, would have the news in a short while that things started happening. That things started happening and we wanted to start happening, oh God, so that we could give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. We think of those that gather here today, Lord, there are things in our spirit that needs to be birthed. Things that we've kept locked in. Things that were settled in our spirit, in our minds for a long time. They need now to be released. They need to come into the open. They need to connect to things that are around us. So that we can now, Lord, have the changes we want. We can have the transformation we want. Father, you didn't say that we should say it. You didn't say it, Lord, so that we can just be made happy. I believe when you said it, oh God, you said it because you mean it. And because you mean it, we can believe it today that it would happen. You said, Lord, we have the ability. That's what you said, Lord. You said we have the ability to call, to call into being that which is not. We don't see it. Nothing there. There's nothing there. We can't see it. We can't feel it. There's nothing there. But we're going to call it into being. We 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 call happiness in. We call goodness in. We call peace in. We call it and wholesomeness in. We call babies in. We call all of these things in. Because we have the ability to do that right now. We call for a better life for all of us that are present here. We're tired of the whole life. We're sick and tired of the whole life. We're sick and tired of God. We call for a better life. Better life, come marching in. Better life, come inside. Better life, take over. Better life, let there be a shifting. Better life, Make it better for all of us. Bless us today, Lord. As we take leave, may we go home knowing that we can expect anything. We can expect anything and find fulfillment because we have a God that loves us to bits. Praise his name. Praise his name. Praise his name. And now may the threefold blessings of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit 
Bless and abide with each and every one of us this day always, even till Jesus comes. God bless you, church.